Welcome back, fellow mitochondriac. Today, you are in for a treat. We are going to be talking about the mitochondrial respirosome and the mitochondrial supercomplexes. This is something that I had absolutely no idea about two years ago. It is something that eluded my entire biochemical training as an undergrad and as a medical student. This is something that was discovered as late as eight years ago by the scientific community. And it is something that if you're a mitochondriac who follows with Dr. Jack Cruz, he alludes to, but he really never talks about. And that is the distance between the mitochondrial proteins and mitochondrial function. So I'm going to start with this slide because this is where most of us throughout our biology training have been exposed to. This is a picture of the electron transport chain. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane, the outer mitochondrial membrane, and the inner membrane space. We're taking protons, creating a gradient, and then we're making ATP. We talked about the Krebs cycle, et cetera. However, as you can see here, and this is on most diagrams that we see going throughout our training, we have complex one, complex two, complex three, complex four, the ATP synthase. We have cytochrome C, we have coenzyme Q, but they are separated as if electrons have to go all the way over here and then all the way over here and then all the way over here and then they're used to make water. This distance is not realistic. This distance is not physiologic. This distance would not support life. And I had listened to so many Dr. Cruz webinars and I'm a member of his site for years and podcasts. And he kept talking about how the distance of the respiratory proteins is what determines mitochondrial function and health. And I just could not see what he was talking about until I discovered this revolution and in scientific investigations, the mitochondrial super complex. So let's go and talk about this at a deeper level. As we've alluded to, each one of the mitochondrial complexes are a series of protein subunits, aka many components of proteins come together to form one big complex. So this is a picture of complex one, two, three, four, and the ATPase. This is a ribbon format when looking at chemical structures of proteins. As you can see, there are a lot of different ribbons. Each of these require a protein. The structures themselves are not important. What I wanna do is convey complexity. These proteins have to be transcribed from DNA, whether it be mitochondrial or nuclear. They have to be translated to make a protein. They have to be folded. They have to be assembled in a very intricate fashion, which is exactly why mitochondrial heteroplasmy is so important for mitochondrial function. Because if one of these mitochondrial proteins is not functional and the complex cannot be assembled, then we will have dysfunction. And the reason why mitochondrial DNA are so much more vulnerable is because they don't have the diverse and robust systems of repair that nuclear DNA do. And on top of that, they're located in an area where metabolism is happening. Mitochondrial redox is happening. Mitochondrial respiration is happening, where mitochondrial reactive oxygen species are created. And if they're overcreated, if they're in excess, they can directly damage the mitochondrial DNA, which can directly affect our ability to create energy through oxidative phosphorylation. So we are going to talk about the respirosome. Instead of enter the dragon, we're going to talk about enter the respirosome. This is where mitochondrial biology gets very exciting. So we're going to talk about first the membrane potential. I've alluded to this. If you're a Jack Cruz follower, he's talked about this many times. When you take the 150 to 200 millivolts that are across the inner mitochondrial membrane and you account for the fact that the membrane width is only five nanometers, tiny, it actually gives a field strength of 30 million volts per meter, which is equivalent to a bolt of lightning. Just think about that for a second. You have a bolt of lightning going on inside of likely billions of mitochondria throughout your body right now. And when that internal lightning bolt weakens, the mitochondrial membrane potential decreases. You cannot make energy and you're going to feel fatigued. You're going to feel bad. You're going to feel brain fog. You're going to feel unwell and diseases will start to manifest. This is critically important. We're going to go do a little physics. In classical mechanics, electrons must climb up the potential hill to appear on the other side. It has to go up its potential energy gradient and then fall back down. However, quantum mechanics allows electron with less energy to tunnel through the barrier and appear on the other side. So instead of climbing this hill and going back down, it's actually going through the hill. This is important for mitochondria because what they have found is we have surveyed proteins with known atomic structures who function involve electron transfer. In these, electrons can transfer up to 14 angstroms. That's a distance between redox centers between areas where electrons are donated and received through the protein medium and distances longer than 14 angstroms will support only a very slow electron tunneling, but could act as high impedance signals useful for regulation. So what this is saying is that the closer the respiratory proteins are together, the closer complex one, two, three, 
four are together, the more likely with less energy, electrons can efficiently flow through the system and allow us to make the maximum amount of energy without losing electrons in the process. Because electrons, when they get lost, they form reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species, which can cause damage when they're in excess. And if you have listened to Dr. Cruz, again, he is the probably most brilliant mitochondriac in the world. I highly encourage you to, to follow him and listen to him if you can. He has mentioned this in many lectures, but it says that for every one angstrom, again, a measure of distance, a very small amount of distance, for every one angstrom that they are further apart, the electron tunneling goes down by a factor of 10. 10x loss in mitochondrial efficiency when the protein complexes are further apart. And this is exactly what it's showing here. The max rate log exponentially falls down as the distance between the proteins are wider. In a typical protein medium, such a distance difference normally corresponds with an approximately 1,000 fold decrease in tunneling, which means that for every 4.8 angstroms in distance, you lose a thousand fold tunneling rates. This is huge. So, as some of you have heard before, Dr. Nick Lane, and the vital question it says, as mosaics built from two genomes, any changes in protein sequences that increase the distance which electrons must travel to get to the next membrane reaction center in the respiratory chain will have predictable negative effects on fitness or even fertilization outcome. Lane notes that beyond separations of about 14 angstroms, quantum tunneling of electrons becomes unlikely, does not happen. For each angstrom increase between redox centers, the speed of electron transfer will fall approximately tenfold. This is where that information comes from. So the distance between the respiratory proteins is vitally important. When we are able to form respiratory chain supercomplexes, that's also known as a mitochondrial supercomplex or a mitochondrial respirosome. When we're able to form these supercomplexes, the complexes are actually pieced together to be as close as possible. So the electrons, that's what the little E minus stands for, that electrons can be transferred as efficiently as possible. As you can see, when you have respiratory chain supercomplexes, you have the highest amount of competitive fitness. And when you don't have these super complexes, you have low levels of competitive fitness. You have low energy, you have excess reactive oxygen species, you have inflammation, you have disease. This is an unbelievable advance of our understanding of mitochondrial metabolism, energy production, and health and disease. I cannot underscore that enough. So in 2016, the respirosome was solved by researchers. And it says, respirosome, a huge molecular machine that carries out cellular respiration, has gained growing attention since its discovery because respiration is the most indispensable biological process in all of living creatures. The concept of respirosome has renewed our understanding of the respiratory chain organization and, most recently, the structure of respirosome solved by Yang's group published in Nature in 2016. First presented the detailed interactions within this huge molecular machine. This is the complexes separated. This is the complexes put together. Complex one, three, four. Complex two is not shown here. This is one of the complexes that is formed. This is called a super complex one, three, four arrangement. There are various mitochondrial super complexes depending on type of cell, depending on the need of the cell. And a lot of this is still frankly being discovered. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for this video. It is a really neat animated video way of looking at the mitochondrial super complex, at looking at the flow of electrons. And it would be very beneficial for anyone who's trying to become a mitochondriac or for existing mitochondriacs like ourselves to watch a video like this because it helps you in your mind conceptualize what's happening on a nanosecond level in every cell of our body. In billions of mitochondria that we have. It is truly a marvel of life to see what is going on, or at least get a glimpse of what is going on every second of every day. We are truly blessed to be alive because this is an unbelievable process. Until next time.